Welcome to your you join us online. We appreciate your company and we believe that it will be a marvelous day today as we connect in faith and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that His grace is sufficient and whatever the devil is doing, God has far outdone by His Son Jesus Christ. He shed blood and pouring out of His Holy Spirit. And there's much to learn, believe me when I say that. There's much to learn and I'm telling you that as we read the word of God, we are going to get into deeper and deeper truths that will give, a greater, give us a greater understanding of what God has provided for us, the great riches we have in Christ Jesus, the great fullness of the inheritance we have in the same seven. We want you to know much more because God didn't just it would be a shame for you to have a gift and not know the quality and the, the worth of the gift that is given. And this gift of God that is called eternal life is not so just uh, living long. And we're going to touch on some of that and if you understand more about this because I believe God wants us to know more. Hallelujah. And I believe it's the lack of understanding or lack of knowledge in these things that make us weak to the enemy. And when we are strong in faith and knowledge and faith in God, then we have a we are serious opposition to Him. Praise God. And then we find the victory that God has planned for us to have in Christ long before the foundation of the world. Amen. Praise God. Then we're going to start with some praise and worship. Hallelujah. Get off here. We know that we have much to do. Come on, lift up those hands right now and just start to acknowledge the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, release your faith. Come on, start to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Thank you. And we honor God here. We stand on him. That's the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lift those hands to him and just acknowledge him. In this house, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him thanks. Come on, give him thanks. Come on, give him thanks. Give the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we praise you. We adore and magnify you in this place. Let the words of our feet. And the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. We can do nothing of ourselves, but with you all things are possible. We engage your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your word of this one. And the power, the grace, the power that is in your word will be unleashed in our lives. Hallelujah. And the gates of hell will not remain. No plan, no counsel. Hallelujah. No plan, no conspiracy of Satan will prevail in the name of Jesus. For you are our God. It is you that made us and that we ourselves. We humble ourselves before you, Lord. See, stretch forth your hand and show yourself mighty. The great signs and wonders and for your glory in all the earth. Let all men see and know that you are God. Hallelujah. Tear down the veil and the blockages, the things that the enemy has placed to keep them your vision, to blind their eyes to the truth that their eyes will be open grace will be given for them to receive the light of your truth in their hearts and shine it for all the world to see hallelujah for your worthy of the praise and the glory from the rising of the sun until it's going down hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, let your hand on 
mountain. Start to read the ear we come. And they praise we each and they worship we each. I do. In the words, I don't praise, I sing to get at least. Hallelujah to anoint it. Manifest now to destroy every yoke. And to lift every burden. Cut and clear the way to support the enemy's plans. And give us a future today. As we walk by faith and not by sight. Fill our mouth with good things. And our youth is renewed like the evil. Hallelujah. Cause us to ascend to new heights. I'm paying your glory to us in deeper dimensions. So we look to you in faith. We claim the victory and give you all the praise among the Lord. The right for the Lord to you. In Jesus' name. Come on, give it praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. You hear the praise in today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's praise it.
and he deserves all of that and more. Praise God. Praise God. Now we need some testimony in the house. You know, my sister's echo and so lucky. Praise God. I don't know, probably because we are shy or, you know, the fear. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's supposed to testify because when we testify, um, it pushes God to work even more for us. Because even last week when I testified about having a more aggressive faith, um, and the situation that I testified about and said, um, that I wasn't sure if things were going to work out and stuff. Um, what happened was that everything worked out for me because something that I thought was over and done, it's not done until God says it is done. And, That's right. right. The whole situation opened up back for me again. So, And that was just because of my fear because if it was before coming here, I would have just give up. But because my pastor tell me not to give up, they don't give up. So, you know, things are on the way to becoming perfect. That's right. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, things are already better. The Lord is on our side. Eh? Amen. Praise God. More testimony. Glory to God. Yes, 
and we get another job. So, the money may not much, but I don't know much more job. So, we leave this big old praise there also. Dear family, we Hallelujah. More will come and better will come. What do you say? That's right. More will come and, and better will come. Better will come. That we say. Praise God. So we, we, Paul says that he has this liberty in God that he, he will not be brought under the power of anything. Praise God. We will submit to the higher power which is for God. But we will not allow anything in the circumstances in his life to make us accountable when the Son has made us free. But you understand that? Praise God. So you need to believe in him and embrace the word that better will come. Trust me. It's not working out, you don't need to keep on fighting and holding on with it like say, no, it can't come. You must trust the Lord because with God, all, all things are possible. possible. Praise God. Anyone test it? Hallelujah. Um, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. I have to give God thanks for changing me and transforming me in a new being. I remember I was reflecting back at where I was coming from. I'm coming from a place where I didn't know what grace was. I didn't know what faith was. But now I'm a teacher. A demonstration of what grace is. The enabling power of faith. And you have to get faith by hearing. And I remember lately I've been praying to God as I want to hear more of His Word. Because whatever I declare in the atmosphere is not what I say. It's what I hear the Father speaks. That is what I declare. And I've been praying for an increase. Not just doing it wishfully. I was writing it as though I've already received it. So I'm saying thank you Lord for the increase. And I'm seeing the increase in my life in the anointing the grace. And I know that when the time the enemy comes, he's coming hard but God says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I think you can't operate with fear. You have to operate by faith. And I remember there was a pain that I was feeling my back some earlier time in the month. And I said, I just want Apostle to lay his hands on me. And I just asked him to lay his hands on me. And he just laid his hands on me. And I just twisted it out. Mind you, even if the pain was not immediately, I wasn't paying attention to that. Because I said, the moment it is done, God said that it is. It is done. You don't work by how you feel. You work by what the Word of God said. And that is what I'm grateful for, that it's increasing in my life, increasing revelation, that even reading the book of Genesis, it's like I'm reading that chapter for the very first time, because there are things in there that I was like, it, it's my glory, I didn't even see it like that. But I'm thankful for the grace of God. Amen. Praise God, His grace is sufficient. Praise God. I said His grace is sufficient. Yes. Praise God. And, uh, no matter which agent Satan said, God's power is more than enough to keep you. Yes. And to keep you victorious and strong. And to overcome the plans of Satan. So, the several times the Lord said, oh, oh, no. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Because he knows that the enemy is going to try to do things to make you afraid. Intimidate you and cause you to run off from the blessing and plan that God has for your life. But if you be faithful and trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, you will see the manifestation of God's promises in your life. Hello. Amen. Because he's not slack concerning his promises. What you say? Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Anyone testimonies? Glory to God. Salva. Yes. Come on, we do praise. Hallelujah. He is a problem, Salva. 
We know the world that says anywhere that the, the people hate God or, or reject God, anywhere that they turn against Him or forget God. He says that place is like hell. No, the city that nation that forget God shall turn it to hell. A place of torment and a place of grieving and mourning. But when you let the light in, hallelujah, as God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And when you allow him to come in that situation, you acknowledge him in all your ways. He said he will direct your path, he will direct your path. And grace will be released to you. Praise God for you to overcome the circumstances that were once overcoming you. What is it? And that's why we keep walking in faith, trusting in the Lord and heeding his word. Because he never leads us wrong. He leads us in a good, prosperous place. And if we listen and heed his word, greater things will manifest. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Any more testimonies? Yes, man, we love to hear the testimonies of the saints and what the Lord is doing. Uh, no more? Uh, no, no more. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to give God thanks for being here today. The goodness of God is truly a blessing to be in this house to understand who you are, who you are, and to understand the goodness of God. You know, um, all the, well, before I came here, there are so many things that I had to unlearn when I came in this house, such as you, you getting sick, you thinking that is some like God allowing for you to be humble, God allowing for you to, to, to come to Him. Not knowing that it's only good things comes from God. You know, it's, 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 it's God, there's no evil in God. God doesn't have to do that because the word of God says the goodness of God leads man to repentance. But all these years you think about all kind of different things, the religion teacher say, um, say you, 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 you don't get eternal life also until you, um, you die. Now I'm understanding that eternal life is in the word of God and it's in Jesus Christ that you get. So for once you listen to that word and the word, um, you allow the word to minister to you and you answer to that call, you have eternal life. I didn't understand that I, I you, you can, um, you are seated in heavenly place. I didn't understand that I am not of the first Adam anymore once I come into the Lord. I didn't understand these things, I guess. When you don't know why you are safe and who you are, you it's easy for you to let go. Let go not knowing the value of what you have in the kingdom of God. Not knowing who you are. You know, you, you, you settle for anything. You give away, it's like Esau said, why am I hungry? And just give me some stew. And you, you just give away your birthright. But knowing who you are, you hold on to that because it's really indeed when Jesus says that, when the man find, find the kingdom, himself out of the he got, himself out of because this is more than anything else that this world can ever offer. And you know, when I'm thinking of that on a daily basis, say, what God has for us, what he has given to us, what he is going to be given even more, it's nothing compared to the world can give you nothing, there's no comparison, nothing at all. Now if you're a beautiful, whatever it is in the world, look and see and feel the pleasures of, it is nothing compared to what God, because I know that some persons out there in the world, if things are going for them, you know what I'm saying, when things are going for them, they don't have money, the money not run. No, they don't have no clothes, they don't want ear, they don't want some nails, they don't want this and that. But I am telling you the joy that I have, the peace that I have, the word didn't give that to me. The word didn't give that to me. You don't understand. Waking up this morning early because we have been having a water situation at our at my home in that area. And this morning early get up and never know say come. So I'm gonna go try and the water was there and I I feel like I'm gonna move the house. I'm supposed to be tired of I feel this new, must be you were praying for, I feel this 
plus of energy to me if I try to control myself and now I say, I'm going to this is really the man, so go on, I'm going to take a look deeper. I feel this new burst of energy, I don't have nothing to think about my body, I worry about my this and that, because you know, you can go to the Lord in prayer about everything. The word of God is a medicine for every situation. There's nothing that you can go through that the word cannot deal with. But it depends on who you allow to give you that word. Because if that person doesn't even understand the word that is given to you, or not living that life, then what you get is the same thing with them of me. The same situation when I'm going to the same life with them, but that's all they have to give to you. So I'm really glad for this house and the grace gift of God, Apostle Richard Fagan. For teaching us the word on a daily basis. The word is very expensive, saints of God. The word is very precious. Very, very precious. It's not no cheating. It's not that which man name you can call, Michael, Ari, Juna, or whatever, and your energy is released to you. Uh, power is released. Healing is released. You know, you call them in distress. You're frustrated. Your mental, your mental capacity is doing your kid. You, 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 you're not a settlement, but you just said, Jesus! Just said, Jesus! And everything is shut down, for shut down, for who, for who, it's like a burst of air. It's like a burst through the atmosphere. And that is what the Word of God does. The incorruptible seed. It gives, make you look all younger. Yes, I'm 51 years old. It make you feel fresh. It make you give energy. It make you know for answer people. It make you know for live. It make you know for talk. It make you know for eat. It make you know for live. It make you know for dress. Look at prophetess. It make you know how everything goes. The Word of God. It's not an easy. It's not an easy look. None of the cheap, cheap plow planting we get here. Where we get here is not, if it's in a chicken bucket, well done. <laughs> if it's in a chicken bucket, don't miss out still. I can tell you. I, it is well seasoned, well proportioned, in a two salt, in a fresh, in a top. It, it is just right. And you'll never come here and go back all the same. If you go back all the same, you're telling yourself a lie. It's either worse or better, and it can never be worse. The only way you are worse is unless you don't receive that which is given to you. Then you go out malnourished, and you go out weaky weaky, and you go out and have miscarriage because you did not receive the seed of the word to bring forth fruit and to get burnt out of it. I want to thank you, sir, and I want to thank God for this house, and I want to bless the Lord. Because when I think of the goodness of the Lord and what he has done for me, me Mitzi, me, I shouldn't even be here, but God, but God, but this house, but this covering, I give God praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, praise him one more time, the house. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. You know what God prepared to do? He has prepared a long time before we even conceived or made. Praise the Lord. And this is just unveiling to us now all the plans that God has for us. And here is still more. That is yet to be unveiled, isn't it? Amen. But we have to well, we have to walk it out. We have to embrace it with all our hearts to understand some things. Some things we will not understand all up front, but as we continue to walk by faith and heed his word, it is it is so deeper and deeper in our spirit to produce a greater revelation of himself and his life in us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we wanted to just keep on keep it on that's it keep on keep it on keep pressing in the lord and don't be weary in well doing for in due season you shall reap if you if you faint not that, that's a vital thing to remember hallelujah we're going to do some worship in the house i want you to just stand in me for a bit and just lift those hands to jesus and just start to honor him Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You want to worship Him in the house? Praise God. Hallelujah.
Come on, lift your hand and say, Thou. Oh, you know He is. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Oh, Lord. Oh. To receive, to receive glory.
blood for your name is great and greatly to be praised I sing praises to your name come on come on Just run into it and they are safe. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, worship him in the house. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. He's so good. Everything he does is well done. 
perfect and holy thank you Lord thank you Lord oh thank you Jesus hallelujah come on lift those hands and meditate upon his goodness right now David said I would have fainted except I believe to see <laughs> the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living hallelujah and you got to know he's working it together for your good yeah. working it together for your good Look, come on for those that love him those that are called the call according to his purpose hallelujah yes Lord glory to God glory to God now bow before him. Bow before him. Bow before him. Mm. i 
that's only holy ground. So come and bow.
Hallelujah. Make it out to where you are. So come, grow us Come, bully to its throne. Come. yourself and come Woo. lay all your keys at his feet yeah. in him you will be made complete when you bow down find a peace with you when you come in, take the load up, and come. Oh, so come and bow. Once you, once you give him a hug, come. Whoa. Whatever it takes, hey, come. Whoa. It'll be worth it after all if you're coming. Grace covers it all if you're coming. Woo. So come and bow. No. Come on, worship. Everything to him. Everything to him. Look. Look.
worship him right now. Let him take you there. In his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand uh, they are pleasures forevermore. Ooh. Let him take you there. Side is still waters.
presence is healing. Come on.
praise him in the house. Come on, lift up holy hands unto him. Come on now, release your praise. Is that the best praise you got?
Maestro. Stay in your presence. 
in stone. Uh, uh, uh. I will dwell in your presence.
praise and glory in the house. Somebody bless him in here. Praise God. Praise God. We want to stay in that attitude of worship. Hello, somebody. And understand that what is God is doing is transforming. Hallelujah. And orchestrating and directing things in his divine purpose and order. Amen. We want to be in that connection with God. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. I say we want to be in that connection with God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I want to be in that connection with God. And I always want to be in that connection with Him. Praise God. And it's not a joke for me. It's not play. It's not a religious service. It's another connection with Him. Praise God for a deeper level and expression of his life in me. Praise God. What about you? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. We were teaching Hallelujah on Sunday about the, the life of God in Christ and Hallelujah today. The certainty of that word within us. Hello, somebody. That is not an if and but and maybe kind of life. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Hallelujah. But it's a sure life in Him. Praise God. It's a what? A sure life in Him. And we need to be really connected to Him accurately to receive such life. Hallelujah. Connection is vital, people of God. Come on, give him the praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to ensure that I am properly connected. Because there are some bridge connection. Hello. You know what I mean? Talk about bridge light. Uh -huh. There are some bridge connections and you want to make sure that our connection is, is real. It's not based on falsehood and with pretense. Hallelujah. And based upon lies but upon the word. The truth of God. Amen. Praise God. Now one of the greatest obstacles a believer will have to go over to have that kind of relationship and life manifesting and experiencing the life of God in Christ is getting over religion is getting over getting past religion and I tell you until you understand the difference between religion and God you don't really know him you're still a stranger to him and we want you to know him. Praise God. We want you to what? To know him. Paul was Saul before he became Paul. He was known as Saul and one who persecuted the church. But he thought he knew God. He what? He thought he knew God, but he was ignorantly serving God. He didn't know really who he was serving until he came and had an encounter with Christ. Hello. Till he what? He had an encounter with Christ. And this is specified, uh, hallelujah, in Galatians chapter 1. He gives this, this testimony, a little snapshot of his testimony of where he came from and what he was going through. Hello. But, but the Lord had to reveal himself to him for him to know him. Did you hear that? Did you get that? The Lord had to what? Reveal himself to him for him to know him. And so this wasn't unknown by Paul's ingenuity of his intelligence and figuring it out for himself. 
but this was a divine encounter hello somebody I brought this revelation to him and he, he declared that this happened God revealed this to him and did not destroy him because God knew that what he was doing was in his ignorance hello somebody and he speak about this call to apostleship this what call to apostleship and it's in Galatians chapter 1 hallelujah hallelujah and he he start from verse 11 he will start from verse 11 hallelujah you want to talk today on those who trust who trust in their religion for salvation those who trust in their religion for salvation and I want to tell you that they will always be offended at the cross and the gospel because religion is not the gospel and the gospel is not religion I want to make that abundantly clear before I proceed religion is not the gospel and the gospel is not religion praise God and we're starting here with what Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 reading from verse 11 it says but I made known to you brethren that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man is what not according to man for I neither received it from man nor was I taught it but it came through the revelation of who Jesus Christ in other words it never came to him through the revelation of Christianity Christianity is the religion Christ is not Christianity Christianity is not Christ and I want to show you some more on that he says this came according to the revelation of who right not the revelation of what but the revelation of who Jesus Christ he says for you have heard of my former conduct and he says former conduct is his former lifestyle in Judaism Judaism is the Jews religion Judaism how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure notice he says how I persecuted the church of God while he was in Judaism the Jews religion now we're going to talk you know because we need, we need to get into the heart of this thing hallelujah because we need to understand all the laws and the statutes and the precepts that were given under the Jews religion was that the Jews religion watch the thing he says for you have heard of my former conduct former is past his past lifestyle in Judaism it means that he left it watch the thing how I persecuted what the church of God beyond measure huh? and tried to destroy it huh? and I advanced in Judaism in other words while he's persecuting the church is advancing in his religion watch the thing watch the thing good while he's persecuting the church he's what advancing in his religion and that religion is the is judaism which is called the jews religion he says beyond many of my contemporaries are those that were in his religion that were those who were of those that kind of zeal and passion to their religion in his own country being more exceedingly zealous he says he was more exceedingly zealous than even they 
those contemporaries in his own nation for the traditions of my father for the tradition of my fathers so he said that was the traditions that they had that was called their religion and being zealous over those things he says he persecuted the church of God the church of God is not stated in a scripture as a religion neither is Christ stated as a religion and the Christ is the son of God and the church is the body of Christ and none is regarded there by Paul as religion but in fact he said it is true is religion he persecuted it and advanced in his religion because he was persecuting it what's that two thing that's why we say we, we're gonna get past this one this will be the hardest hurdle for most believers to cross getting beyond religion to true relationship come on watch the thing now but he said in verse 15 but when it pleased God it what when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me to what his son in me it is in that encounter he had with Christ this revelation came to him as he already stated in verse 12 I neither received it from man nor was I taught it but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ come on so he says to reveal his son verse 16 of Galatians 1 to reveal his son in me that I might preach him to the Gentiles he didn't say he's preaching Christianity who is he preaching Christ is not what is he preaching is who is he preaching watch the thing we want to give you more hallelujah he's preaching Christ come on so he's not leaving one religion to get another one hallelujah he's leaving his religion to know Christ and to preach whom they know come on somebody to declare who he knows hallelujah and he says now when it pleased God eh, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood huh eh? In other words, he didn't seek the approval of men for this calling. Lord Jesus. I said what? He didn't seek the approval of men for this calling because it's not men that put this calling on him. Watch the thing. And just in case some would say is men speak in general of unsaved men, Paul made it further clearer in verse 17. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Just in case they said, well, he didn't check ungodly men but he checked the elders and leaders of the church no he says this he did not do watch the thing good those were apostles before me but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus then after three years come on after what Three years. No, those three years he's already declaring. He's already declaring the gospel. And he says, he went up to Jerusalem and remained with Peter 15 days. But he saw none of the other apostles 
except James and the Lord's brothers. Yeah? Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed before God, I do not lie. So he says, this is a true testimony. Hallelujah. And he says, afterwards, and what? Is an afterward. I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they were hearing only what? He who formerly persecuted us, us who? The church. Now preaches what? The faith which he once tried to destroy. Now preaches what? The faith which he once tried to destroy and they glorified God. And they what? And they glorified God in me. My God, that's another one. They glorified God in me. Oh, oh. Some of you will get it later. Praise God. They glorified God in it. No, all the glory is for God. You don't get nothing, Apostle. But they glorified God in me. In me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because he wants us to understand it was not another religion he went into. Hallelujah. But Paul is now saying, I am in Christ. Christ is not a religion. Hallelujah. Praise God. Christ is the son of the living God. The word that became flesh and dwell amongst men. He is the life of God. He is the word of God. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the way, the truth and the life. Come on. He is the light of the world. Glory to God. He is the lamb of God. He is our high priest. The mediator between God and man. Our redeemer and king. Glory to God. Our elder brother. Glory to God. Thank you Jesus. The alpha and the omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. He is the amen. Oh, you never know is the amen. So read that in Revelation 2 and 1. Praise God. He's the amen. He is the faithful one. Praise God. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hunkering lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. The prince of peace. Mighty God, Elohim, El Shaddai, Emmanuel, come on somebody. He is the Holy One of God. My God, come on. He is the great I am. Glory to God. Come on now. He is the one, Paul is saying, I'm in him. And he is in me. And I'm declaring him. The word declare that he would use is preach. I preach Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I preach who? I preach Christ. Praise God. The cross and the gospel becomes an offense to the religious. The cross and the gospel becomes what? An offense to the religious. The point being is that 
those who trust in religion for salvation take pride in their religion <laughs> take pride in their religion and the cross robs them of this pride my God the cross robs them of this boasting that they have in their religion hallelujah it's because no matter whether you're learned or unlearned whether you're bond or free whether you are a Jew or a Gentile whether you are of the holy tribe of Israel or you're from some nation that people look down on and say there's nothing much about you the cross brings significance to every human being talk to me now while the law and religion highlight a certain set of human beings the cross is declaring value on all oh Jesus that's why it is so powerful and Paul said he will not forget or neglect to declare about the cross of Jesus Christ it's not a religion is preaching hallelujah it's a means of salvation he's preaching hallelujah and he says this comes through Christ hallelujah this comes through Christ now the boasting that people have in the religion is rough because the cross does not discriminate but religion discriminates oh Jesus come on now Ah, oh, Christ does not discriminate but religion discriminate hallelujah and that's why it is a different thing to preach religion from preaching Christ and many know religion but up to this point they don't know Christ come on they try to talk a lot of things about him using his name but using a person's name and talking much about them don't mean you know them you can know a lot about a person and still don't have a relationship with them ah oh, Jesus you can get a lot of information and speak a lot of information about them and still don't know them and Paul wasn't declaring something he don't know <laughs> that's why he could speak with such boldness hello somebody that he's not presenting a religion that persons can say well I don't believe in this that you're preaching Paul and still be saved oh Jesus because it is Christ he's preaching you see you can reject a certain religion and still be saved but you can't reject Christ and still be saved and that's why he says we're not preaching religion come on now we preach Christ and him crucified is referring to the cross glory to God his death for humanity hallelujah to redeem them from their sins praise God hallelujah so he says you need to understand this is not about religion tell somebody this is not about religion make it more specific this is not about Christianity this is about Christ 
Now you need to know Christ. It's not Christianity you need to know. Or Christianity can tell you some things about him. But it lacks the power to make you know him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on somebody. This is not about the Bible. Let me get touchy for some more people. This is not about the Bible. The Bible tells you a lot of things about him. But the Bible is not him. Oh Jesus. So you can do a lot of Bible studies. <laughs> and know your Bible. And still don't know him. Lord Jesus. Now we're getting very sticky now. Watch now we're coming more. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Don't stone me yet. I have more. Don't stone me yet. Wait. Praise God. So this is not about your Christianity. Your religion. And this is not about your Bible. Mm-hmm. This that Paul is saying, the gospel is about Christ and his kingdom. Come on now, somebody. So you say, you need to know him. Come on now. It's not just to know about him. Hallelujah. But to what? Know him. Glory to God. And it says that, that the, the, the people will say, know him for yourself. But knowing for yourself don't mean that no man don't help you. But you still need to know him. It don't mean that you sit by yourself now and say, I'm going to know him. Because you need leaders and teachers to introduce you to him. And you don't just get up and just know him, sir. Hallelujah, what you need to hear the preachers. Hello. But, but I, I want to bring you to the point where, where Jesus said, said to the Pharisees, you think that you have life through studying these scriptures. You study them because you believe in them there is life. But he says, scriptures, those scriptures speak of me. Those scriptures what? Speak of me. In other words, he says, you can sit down with the law and all the prophets and all the writings and study them and still don't know. Still don't know the one who you ought to know. What is that? John 5 verse 39. John 5 verse 39 Jesus says you search the scriptures for in them you have you think in other words it's not so but you think so you search the scriptures Jesus says he says for in them you think you have eternal life you think you have eternal life in your bible that was their Bible. The law and the prophecy. He says, you think in them you have eternal life. But he says, these are they which testify of me. In other words, they talk about me. Ah, but all they talk about me are here. Won't connect you with me until you come to me. What's your thing now? Until you what? Come to me. So you can read all about me. <laughs> Talk all about me. But until you come to me, you don't know me. Glory to God. Watch the thing. What he said in verse 40. But you are not willing to come to me. That you may have life. Glory to God. You are not willing to come to me. No, I didn't have to come to him. I have time. I know God. 
He saw him as a man, so he said, how do you have to come to him? We study the scriptures and we pray and we listen to God. We don't need to come to him. But the father sent him to save them. What you think? The father what? Sent him to save them. Now if they refuse who the father sent, how will they be saved? Okay. Come on now. You search the scriptures, Jesus said to them. You search it, you know. So they, they, nothing is wrong with searching the scriptures. It's a good thing. But he says, search in scriptures by yourself without coming to the one who the Lord through scriptures declared to you. <laughs> will keep you disconnected from the life that God wants you to have. Come on somebody. Because everyone is sent that come with the word. They come with life. It's not religion. Oh Jesus. Religion is not life. <laughs> You can live your life according to religion. But religion didn't give life to you. Nor does it keep your life. Hallelujah. But he says then, if you come to the one who the Father sent, you will receive life. Ah, uh, You will what? receive life because there is life in the word of God hallelujah and when we come to who he sent and that life is released you receive life so it's more than just studying and searching through what is written <laughs> come on in, in St. John 3 Verse 1 and 2 tells us that there was a man named Nicodemus who was a ruler of the synagogues. He would, what many would be calling a bishop today, overseeing many churches under his covering. So he would say, that man have to know something to hold such a position. He have to have some maturity in spiritual things knowledge in scriptures and certain kind of conduct to hold such position yet still the Lord Nicodemus came to the Lord and said Rabbi which means teacher said, we know that you are a teacher coming from God he says we know he's speaking with knowledge of those who are leading among the Pharisees that despite the resistance they know that he had to come from God because the things that he's doing are not from the devil <laughs> God is testifying of him glory to God I say what? God is testifying of him through signs and through wonders. God, our way of putting a signature and certain report and statements being declared. Come on. Like when you hear some politicians say, we approve this message. Well, the Lord approve his message with signs and with wonders. And and Nicodemus noticed this and said, no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. No one can do these signs that you do unless what? God is with him. So he identified something supernatural. Glory 
to God and know that it wasn't just supernatural but it was something supernaturally being done by God to approve this man to testify of this man and his ministry glory to God hallelujah hallelujah now when God testify of a man is a true testimony because God cannot lie glory to God hello because what God cannot lie so the account of Jesus is testified of God testifies of him God what all right now Acts starts with that statement in chapter 1 verse 1 saying the former account I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus what began both to do and teach both to what do and teach come on now he says this is the account of it this is the what account that he made of it and wrote to Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until he was taken up and he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after suffering by many what infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God now during those 40 days that the Lord appeared and spoke to them after his resurrection before his ascension Paul was not on the scene Paul was not on the scene Paul wasn't even born <laughs> my God it's many years later Paul come on the scene when Peter was ministering and their need rose up in the church for widows that were left unattended and Peter had to be helping to bring food and things to the widows that were unattended and Peter felt convicted in his heart about it that he was not giving full attention to the command that the Lord gave him to attend to the sheep to feed his sheep wasn't about giving widows food and clothes it was to attend to them with the word and with prayer and he said they had to choose amongst themselves seven deacons stewards that would be chosen for this service to serve at the table of widows hello somebody with good reputation full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom come on now. who would attend to these things but he says but we will give ourselves huh? verse 4 we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word he says things can come up in the church and make leaders get distracted and start to take on some other work they call it church work but that was not what the Lord called them to do so though it is good to feed the widow distribute clothes and goods to them to take care of their physical needs that is not what the apostles were called to do hello though it is good to feed the hungry and lot of people heard about Jesus 
that he fed 5,000 not counting women and children and another time he fed 4,000 then many start to come because of the fish and the bread Jesus still had to make it clear to them say, that is not what he's called to do oh 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 some don't know that let me show you some, some don't know that because they think that's what the church is here to do too so, so we want to clear up some things mm -hmm. right, so, so we want to clear up some things because we say this is not religion come on now this is Christ come on now we are declaring Christ what are we declaring hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. Now look in John, St. John chapter 6. Look at St. John chapter 6. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We said verse 27. Praise God. Okay. There it is. All right. Okay, yes, it's from verse 24. Take it from verse 24. Now, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, because uh, Jesus went over to the other side by boat. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. They came what? Seeking Jesus. Sound good, not true? Man, people all take boats to go across water. Go across sea to seek Jesus. That sound good. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Sound good, not true. What did Jesus say? Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs. But because you ate of the loaves and were filled, do not labor for food which perishes. Come on now. But for what? For the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. Come on now. Hello, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. My God. Now this seal was in Sabbath day. And it still is not. Hallelujah. The seal that is upon him is that they said the Spirit of the Lord that's the seal the Holy Spirit the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me that's Luke 4 verse 18 he has what anointed me to preach the gospel come on now the gospel is not a formula for another religion is the testimony of a new life of the God kind of life in Christ Jesus glory to God he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and to what recovering of sight to the blind 
and to set at liberty those who are oppressed come on declaring to them the favor of the Lord the acceptable year of the Lord come on you see anything there so say we must start feeding program for the poor you see anything there sir so we must start feeding program for the poor you see anything there so say we must start a clothing distribution for clothe all the naked people them You see anything there, so say we must start a housing scheme so we can make everybody have their own house. So we make no one homeless, everybody gonna have their own home. This is our mission. You see that in there? Now religion will do these things. And those things are not evil to give food to the hungry, to clothe the naked, ah, to provide shelter for the homeless. They are good things, but none of that save them from destruction. Check it in good. None of that secure them for eternal life. My God, my God. Is not whosoever believeth in him shall have pretty house and car, nice wife and no food. Eternal life. Okay, so the mission is that they have that life. Don't get, don't lose focus. The mission is for them to have that life. The mission is not for every person who is sick to be healed. Though we have gifts of healing. Come on now. The mission is not to prophesy and tell people what they go on in the future, present or past. Watch the thing. He said the mission is for them to engage in this life Hallelujah. that Jesus come to give to them. And he said if they don't get it, they are going to perish. Right. My God, my God, my God, my God. Come on now. I say this is not religion. Religion can make you very comfortable in sin. Religion can take you out of some rough places, some rough kind of life, and make life more comfortable for you. If you're not having no job, religion can make you get some food. You're not having nothing to buy, no shop, religion can make some clothes come. Religious people will carry that for you. If you're sleeping out of road, some religious people will take you in their home. But that won't save your soul. Lord Jesus. We got to understand. Remember I told you that those things aren't evil. You know? But we're saying those things don't save. Lord Jesus. And Jesus Christ come with a mission to save. To seek and to save that which was lost is not to make those who lost comfortable till they get more lost. Lord Jesus, oh, oh you know, no understand, no, no. You know, no man. If you give them job, you know, you might stop them from thief, and so if they stop from thief because they never work, you know, it's a good thing to do for them. So they are right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And now since then they were in the teeth more. And now since then they were in teeth more. And Carly hustling. Broke a bar's foot. Because until their soul is saved, 
not not saved Lord Jesus you better hear what I'm telling you today I say until their soul is saved nothing is saved everything they have will perish it will go down in vain come on somebody you see when the Lord talk about salvation is for your whole being for your whole life come on now it's not a part we a thing but if you have your eyes on the wrong priorities putting some things as priorities that should not over the kingdom of God you miss out on that life because many come to Christianity because they want husband because they want wife some come because they're getting old and want a good funeral some come because they know say the church can be an extra to their income where the income can reach then just call upon the church help me so the church becomes another source of income all right don't hear we don't know already whether you say amen or oh me we know say a true hallelujah some come because they want ease the sentence in the courtroom to convince the judge say me become Christian now so nobody give me the long sentence come and change my life you hear about them that you don't mm. oh you ain't one of them too don't eh, yes amen Hallelujah. At least some man is. Hallelujah. But if you understand that when you come, coming with those reasons will not save you. Because if this was all right with Jesus, Jesus would congratulate these people for crossing sea by boat to come and find him. But he says, no. You're laboring for bread. <laughs> You're laboring for the bread that perish. You're laboring for something but when you use it, it's done. But what I'm giving to you, when you use it, it's done, done. It increase. Glory to God. And he says, you are getting eternal life in the word I'm declaring to you. Come on, somebody. Man, nobody can say me rob them. Because what I'm giving to them is more than what they're giving to me. Hallelujah. My God, I'm mean, going to preach for people money. I'm going to preach for them things. Because I'm giving them something far more valuable. Because when any things they come and use, then done and wreck and wrap and mash up, you need more things. But when you get the word and hold on to the word, it holds with you for life. It's growing in you and producing more life. So you can't lose it to get the word. Hello, somebody. Paul wasn't preaching religion. I'm talking to somebody here. But he was preaching Christ. Hallelujah. He's preaching who? Christ. Right. It's not a what he's preaching. It's a who he's preaching. Praise God. And he's preaching Christ. Glory to God. And he's saying that you need to receive who he's declaring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you say me not ready for Christ, you know, to keep the knock my door for get things from me. Mm -mm. I know fat no fall from no mangoes. If you on your way to hell uh, and you want to continue on your way to hell, why I must help you? That's not my mission. My mission is not to make it more comfortable for you to go to hell. Make you more comfortable with your sin. Till you feel good and ready, so you have enough of it. 
And when you cut up, then we say, well, if you ain't no. Hello, somebody. But we got to remember the main cause we are here. Lord Jesus. And many made pledges to God. God, if you give me this business, I'm not going to stop testify to others about your goodness to me that they can serve and trust you and you will do the same for them. Now they got their business, they will tell you. No one nobody talk about no God here, so because I know that we come about, we come to make money. Do you hear that one there? Now they get the business that they pray to God for. God lock out of the business. Till then go back to church. When they go back to church is God time. And when they go to their business place, God must stay out that door till the business hours over. Because some serious things are happening there that he might not agree with. But it's all for the sake of making money. And God understands we need it to pay our bills. Come on now. So they have forgotten the main mission. And have substituted it with other things. My God. This is what the Lord says. The cares of the world. The deceitfulness of riches have choked their faith. Now they that don't go out and street preaching, uh, they that just stay in their church, whether on their Saturday or their Sunday, come on now, they know will say this meeting is disturbing their business. It's disturbing their business because they can't talk to their customers and relate to their people as they want because of this Lord more preach over here. But instead you should say to your customer, Oh, is that right? Is a preacher, you can't hear some of it too. Because while you go in to church, there are many who are not. Who need to hear the word. Ah, and if you be honest about it, you didn't hear the word first when you wanted to hear it. Uh -huh. But the seed was being sown to the point where you wanted to hear it. You inquired more after more word came. Come on now. So it's not the first time you ever hear the word. You run gone and said, I surrender all. But words were being sown. And Jesus told his disciples that they were reaping of what words were already sown in the people. Come on now. He says, you, you're reaping where others have sown. Come on now. Others sown that did not reap and you're reaping of it. Come on. Words were sown in them. Because if there's no words sown in anybody, you know, and we come trying to share the word with them. There is no connection. Oh Jesus. Because an appetite has to be created for the word. For one to receive the word. You know. yeah. Hello. An appetite has to be created for what? The word of God to receive the word of God. There was a need for a forerunner before Christ. All right, you know the thing. 
So it shows then that though Christ is the word of God become flesh, there was still need for someone to come before him and prepare the way for him. Prep the people for what is coming next. That's all. And that prep helped in delivering of his ministry. Lord Jesus. Come on now. So when where there is no blowing of the heart, no sowing of the seed in that heart, that hurt heart becomes barren, desolate, dry. Come on. When word drop in at those heart, it comes like we aside. We aside have not been plowed. It has not been treated to sow nothing there. So when word drop there, birds that the air just pick it up. Because it not have it the soil is not gravitating to, to take that seed in. It's just on the surface. Till birds come to it when. Come on now. Come on now. Not been plowed up, not been treated. You have to understand you now. Who received the word and produced 60 and 30 and 100 fold from the word? Their hearts have been plowed up. Their hearts have been treated with the word and the Holy Spirit for them to receive it and say, yes, that resonated my spirit. Otherwise, there'd be no sense of agreement with the word. And if there's no sense of agreement, they cannot receive it. Come on now. Talk to me now. So it talks about those who the word drop like on wayside on the surface and there's falls that the air just come and take it away. Then it talks about those that the seed go to look further. But it have little bit of soil. Mostly rocks and stones. And he says that don't have much earth to facilitate the growth and strength of what should come out of the seed in that life. And so when the sun come up, persecution and tribulation, heat reach it, it wither up and die. It don't last. Their salvation is short-lived. Their, 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 their testimony, no stand. Hello, somebody. He says, then there's those who, yes, it have a lot of soil and earth. You know, what the rocks and hard resistance to it. But it have some love for some worldly things. Thorns amongst it. It's thorn amongst thorns. And he says, now those, those thorns that grow up, those desires and cares for the world, choke that life they must have in Christ. They are divided. They are double-minded. Come on now. They care for the word. But they care for the world too. And the cares of the world is more overwhelming and destroys the productivity, the fruitfulness of the word in their life. Come on now. So the life they should have, they don't have it. Three quarter of those who hear the word don't produce nothing from it. Three quarter of those who heard the word from the Lord don't produce nothing from it. First set we aside they are forgetful hearers Second set, stony ground. They are resistant hearers. They hear, but they have some things of attitude towards the word when they say them kind of word they too hard. That hard though. They would really say God is hard, but they are the ones who are hard. They are not committed, submitted to the word. Come on now. And those hard places of resistance is what he called stony ground. 
And then he speaks about those, he says, sown amongst thorns. Those are those who are double-minded. Is where the Lord said to his disciples, you cannot serve two masters, for there are two gods in this world. It's God and mammon, material positions and possessions and gain. People's private achievements and goals get into the way of God's purpose and plan for their life. Come on. So one has to die to themselves, to their will, to know God's will. They have to die to their way of life, to know the way of life that God is offering them through Jesus Christ. So they can't know this by continuing by their own human effort. Religion puts much emphasis on human effort. <laughs> Religion does what? Put much emphasis on what? Human effort. While the gospel that Paul declared, when he declared Christ, it put much emphasis on the life, nature, and power of Christ. So when he says, Christ in you, he said, if he that, that defeated Satan, defeated and overcome death, defeated and overcome the grave, defeated and overcome the world, is living in you, then he says, you should defeat and overcome all those obstacles coming against you. Those would not be an excuse to say, I'm only human. Because of the life that is in you. Come on now. Because of the, the life that is in you. No, so he's not preaching to them a religion. He's preaching to them a life that they must believe in. That is available to them in Christ Jesus. Did you get that one? Now if you ask anyone relying on human effort, can a human be perfect? They will tell you no. And the reason they will tell you no is because they know humans fail. But any human that is a believer will say, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus never fails. Praise God. And if you're saying that Jesus never fails, and it's the life of Jesus that you are receiving, then you know you can now say, you will not fail because of he that is not visiting you, but living in you. And the life you're living is not your own feeling, trying, disappointing, regretful life. Come on now. But it's the life of God in Christ. And he's calling this life eternal life. Glory to God. He's calling this life what? Eternal life. He says, this life is in Christ. In other words, you cannot have this life outside of him. It could be just human life. Because he brought life to, he, to us with human life. So it's not the human life that we have. He's just extending and calling it eternal. But he's giving us a different life. A different one because he says uh, uh, those who have not the son have not life come on hallelujah so if he says if you have not the son you don't have life it couldn't be human life because he's speaking to people with human life but he's telling them you don't have that life you get it 
You don't have that life. And what is that life called? Eternal life. And that's what he says in verse 11 of 1 John 5. He says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. Huh? And this life is in his son. You cannot say you have that life without his son. You have to be in the son to have that life. Now the son himself is called eternal life. Did you know that? First John 1 Verse 1 to 3, somewhere there, says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning what? So not only is Christ called the word of God, he's also called the word of life is the word that brings that life to us and he says the life was manifested the life was manif revealed is what manifested me and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life that eternal life, he says, is what we've seen, that we have bear witness, that we declare to you, that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Who is he talking about? Christ Jesus. So he's declaring Christ Jesus as that eternal life that was with the Father. That manifested himself to us. St. John 1 is saying the same thing. St. John 1 from verse 1 to 5 and verse 14. Praise God. He says, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was. In him was. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Come on somebody. Here we down in verse 14, or 12 to 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Come on. The life is in his son. His son is called the word of God, the word of life, eternal life. Come on, somebody. You cannot have that life without him. Come on now. You cannot have that life without him. Now, now, now you can have religion. You can have religion without him. <laughs> but you cannot have that life without him. And that's why this gospel becomes an offense. Because the whole thing is declaring that life. And saying that that life is not wishful thinking and reformed human behavior. He said, this has to do with the very presence and nature of Christ dwelling in you. Come on. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, those who believe in me. If you 
you believe in him, the word of God, if you believe in him, that eternal life, he says, the works that I do, you will do it too. Now, most religious people will tell you, we can't do it. Only Jesus can do it. Come on. But Jesus says, the works that I do, you will do it too. Come on, somebody. If he says you will do it too, then you can do it. Correct. But you see, many don't accept the word of God like that. They make excuses for it. No, we don't do it. We just pray. And he do it. Really. Come on. So they are passing it back to the Lord. The Lord give them the key and they are passing it back to him. You open the door, the Lord says. He says, no. They said, no to the Lord. You open the door. And the Lord said, I'll give you the keys. Open the door. And he said, no, Lord. I got the keys, but it's your door. You open the door. The door that you open, no man can close. And the Lord is telling, I'll give you the keys. I say, I'll give you the keys. Now, if I give you the keys, you have right. You have access. You have power to open the door. The door is not going to say, who is using the key? Once you put in the key and turn it, the door is going to open. Come on now. If you understand that principle, now you can use the key. Glory to God. I say use the key. Now you have some people say, well, you know, we can pray for this sister to be healed, but if the Lord don't want to heal him, he's not going to heal him because, you know, we don't know if it is the will of God to heal the sick. <laughs> You need to know it is the will of the Lord to heal the sick. Because the Lord is our healer. A, a, a healer or a doctor does not rejoice in their patient being sick. They rejoice in their patient being well. Come on somebody. They don't boast about how much patient they have sick. Any doctor doing that, you know, cobbler. He's a cobbler. He's just trying to use his profession as a means to gain enough income. He doesn't care for the patients. So he's not a real doctor. He's not a real doctor. First thing the doctor must do is care for the patient. But if he care more about the money coming in, they care for the patient. Doing the down. Because that is not the main interest. His priority has shifted from the well-being of the patient to the well-being of himself. Come on, somebody. So he becomes a hireling instead of a real physician. He's just getting the job done. You're paying him to kill you off. <laughs> Are you paying him? You know? You're paying your assassin. To finish you off good. And he want to make sure saying don't finish you off too early. For him get enough money out of you. Right. But if you know good doctors, good doctors don't keep your coming coming with complaints. You can go in and just say, well, oh, you just come for your checkup. Because you know that they've been treating you well and instruction they give you is keeping you in good health. You don't, they don't have to always treat you when you're sick. Doctors not only to treat you when you're sick. Hello, somebody. What is you can check on your vital organ to see that everything is functioning well. Not true. Right? But good doctors will operate like that, but other doctors, uh, yeah. You know, they will be here just to make a loot of you. 
and those some things they can easily will tell you to stop you from keep taking that same medication or keep going to further stages where you need more they hide those things from you because that will help you to keep coming and keep the practice more prosperous for their bank account and their financial statements but it's not good for you to go to those kind of doctors Jesus didn't operate like that he ministered to people often they minister to people he didn't find that he ministered a man with blindness and a man keep coming back to get healed from blindness again definitely and they come back every time he got hearing gone pastor Jesus the hearing gone the time you touch his arm he go home he hearing gone again I mean come <laughs> Lord Jesus I don't know where these people get faith they need to get some real faith huh because when you have real faith, you not keep coming like that. Watch her. I want to show the messenger. When you have real faith, come on now. When you have real faith, you won't keep coming back with the same complaint. You're moving from glory to glory strength to strength faith to faith huh? Huh? increasing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will help you to tap into the benefits that the life you receive in him come on now helps you to what tap into the benefits of the life but religion when you think of religion as a means of salvation, it's frustrating. Come on, somebody. It's what? It's All right, let, no. It, it, you, you, because you feel you're doing it right, yeah. but you're not getting the results. Right. I heard one man said it's insanity for one to keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Come on now. Listen to what Paul speaks about the religious in Romans 10, verse 2 to 3. Speaks about the religious in Israel. I'll give you more meat on this thing. Sure, it's a religion, don't cut it for Paul. So when they say, give me that old time religion because it was good for Paul and Silas, it's good enough for me. No, it was not good enough for Paul and Silas. That's why they left it to know Christ. He says, Romans 10, verse 2 to 3. Is that what I said? Praise God. It says, For I bear them witness, them who? The Jews, Israel. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God. They what? Have God. They have a zeal for God. Religion give you that. He give you a zeal for God but not according to knowledge come on but what not according to knowledge that the, the zeal is for God but not according to knowledge come on somebody this is serious business hello in other words their zeal is towards their religion they have a certain enthusiasm for that religion and believe that love for that religion is love for God so they equate their religion to be the same as God listen to me good they what equate their religion to be the same thing as God hallelujah but it is not enlightened according to correct and vital knowledge of God ah oh, come on now they, 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 they take their knowledge about God to be knowledge of God and they, they, they lack that intimacy between them and God he says for they being ignorant of God's righteousness ignorant of what this is vital and accurate knowledge 
They are ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Come on now. That's what happened with religion. You think you know the best way to be right with God without revelation from God. You will be wrong. Hello? Everyone that got it right had a revelation of God through Jesus Christ. You cannot have that life without him. Come on, somebody. Hello. He says, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God, a scribe, which makes one acceptable to him in word, thought, and deed, and seeking to establish a righteousness, a means of righteousness of their own, they did not obey or submit themselves to God's righteousness. That means God's means of salvation is Christ and the gospel. They did not submit to that. Some people will say, well, me, me, me knowing I'm a self. We don't need nobody to tell you. Know, me, me know. Me know God. Me know him. I don't need nobody to tell me. Me know God. Come on. But Paul declared it. Say, how will they hear without a preacher? How are they going to have faith if they don't hear? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. And how will they hear without a preacher? How will there be a preacher if there's not one sent? Hallelujah. So they still must hear. Don't you? Somebody who's got the life got to declare it to them. And too many people trying to declare a life they don't have. <laughs> Talking about a God they don't know. And leading congregation into error. Falls with an hypocrisy. Hello somebody. All testimony showed that those in religion have zeal for God, but they lack vital knowledge of the life that comes from Him for them to know Him as they should. Hello. Paul testimony of his departure from the religion is what we read from Galatians 1 13 to 17. That he departed, he what? Departed. departed from that religion and now was part of the household of faith. Praise God, call the church. Now was part of the household of faith. Jesus didn't come here to build religion when he says, I will build my church. It's not religion he was talking about. He's talking about a family, a body of believers who are walking with their life of that is in him, in them. Because he came to give you that life that those who believe on him would have it. You know, sir? And he said, he that don't believe in him is already condemned. But he who believes will have that life. Come on. So he's calling you into that life. Paul had to leave that life. Not true? And Paul had to also defend that life against religion. Even with Peter. Galatians 2 from 14 to 16 and 19 to 21. Hallelujah. He had to defend that life. It wasn't religion Paul was defending. Paul was defending that life. Are you hearing me? He says in Galatians 2 verse 14 to 16. But when I saw that they were not straightforward. They were what? 
not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. Come on now. It's not about the religion. Truth of the gospel. I said to Peter before them, if you be a Jew, live in manner of Gentiles and not as Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? That's what religion do. Compel Gentiles to live as Jews. <laughs> God didn't think his Jews is God's people. But God's people is anyone who have this faith, this life in them. Come on now. He says, who are the children of Abraham? Come on now. They are those who have the faith of Abraham. It's not by blood and fleshly relation. It's by faith in the word of life that gives that life. Come on. He says, why then you're compelling Gentiles to live as Jews? Who we who are Jews, Paul said, are not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified or made righteous in the sight of God by the works of the law. The works of the law was their religion. He says, by what by what? Faith in who? In the religion? No, faith in Jesus Christ. That's not religion. Tell somebody that's not religion. Jesus Christ is not religion. Mary didn't give birth to a religion. <laughs> the Holy Ghost didn't conceive of a religion in Mary's womb. No, it's not a religion died on the cross. And rose again on the third day, first day of the week. No, it's not religion. It's Christ that rose, that ascended, that is coming again. That we might be justified by faith in who? Faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified no flesh is declared right in the sight of God by religion your religion is only showing how messy you are it's not saving you it is Christ that saves Christ did not come to start another religion but that people from all religion would know God through him So declaring Christianity is not the same thing as declaring Christ. Come on. That's why there is so much different beliefs in Christianity. But there is only one belief in Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why there is so much division in Christianity. But there is no division in Christ. Paul himself asked, is Christ divided? No. Come on. But Christianity is. Hallelujah. Christ is not. Glory to God. It's faith in Christ that brings salvation. Are you following this? Thanks be to God. Hello. Glory to God. And what else did we say from verse what? Verse 19 to 21 says, For through the law, Paul says, For through the law, huh? I through the law died to the law. Died to it. Me dead to it. I'm not saved me. I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. Come on. That I might live is, is making it clear there is not the law is using to live to God. Ha ha ha. He says, is the life I receive from God through 
Christ that is living to God. Watch the thing. Because he said in verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Come on. It is what? No longer I who live but who? Christ lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh I live by what? Faith, Faith in who? The Son of God who loved me gave himself for me. Come on. I do not set aside the grace of God for righteousness comes through the law then Christ died in vain. Man, even if you are a baby, you understand that one. Hallelujah. Because he's saying, you are, listen how this is rephrased. I like to rephrase it in some text. As we call it, amplify the text. Hallelujah. In verse 21, I do not set aside, neglect, or reject the grace that is the enabling life and power of God. For if righteousness through the law, the works of the flesh or humanity came, then Christ died, poured out his life in vain. If he poured out the life and I received that life, then I can't say is my life doing it is his life doing it and if I start to trust more in his life than in my life people will see more of his life oh Jesus and less of mine because it's no more I who live hallelujah oh hallelujah no, when you live that life, that life is not no room for rent. Uh, that, that life is not no jump in and jump out. Uh, hopscotch. It's not no seesaw. Up and down. I'm up, I'm down, I'm in. Oh boy. Yeah, that life is consistent. That life is continually revealing more life. And it's the life of God in Christ. Somebody give him the praise. Hallelujah. And you need to embrace that life. Walk in that life testify of that life believe in that life come on you believe in your flesh everything the flesh the flesh have a lot to say to you that will get you of course when you believe in it but when you believe in the life of God in Christ in you my God you can put the works of the flesh to death and live in accordance to God's purpose and will because it's all tailored in the life he gave you in Christ Jesus but you can't have that life outside of Christ you hear that let them know so you want that life you have to see them in a Jesus come on somebody and allow that life to marinate in you you have to embrace it fast. I think about it. Hallelujah. Set your mind upon it. That's why Paul says you, you should set your mind on these things. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are honest, of things of virtue, things of good report. Think on these things. Come on. 
you can choose to think on that life because if you believe that life is in you you're going to be thinking on it not true and that, that life is going to show more and more in you. so it's more than just living long it's the quality of the life that you have that is in Christ Jesus and he said if any man be in Christ Jesus he's a new creature all things are what passed away and behold all things have become new hallelujah so you need to walk in the life come on stand with me we're gonna pray praise God we we all have time to give you all of things We have the time to share it here, but we're not out a word. But we got to keep you with more, with more. Hello. Thinking and believing and till you know that life. Remember, we talk about when, when you chose something and becomes one, it's not it's inseparable. It is what? Mm -hmm. When you mix all that sugar with that water, man, then you must take out body sugar. Because uh -uh. it's mixed out in that water. The same way it says that life must marinate in you. And it says, it's no longer you that is living, but Christ that is living in you. Come on now. I said the word is engrafted in your spirit, it produces that life. But do you believe in that life? Come on, give God the praise right now. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him and praise him for the word. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we don't want to just talk about that life. But we want others to see and know that life is real. Become ambassadors of Christ is unveiling that life in this dark world. You see, as lights as children of light shining in a dark and crooked world. That's the way your light must shine before men. This light of life shine before men that they will see our good work and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We lay it all down, Lord. To know that life. We cast down every image. Every imagination. Every feeling. Every view. Every thought that. Exalts itself against your knowledge. We bring it. Into captivity. And into obedience to Christ. Obedience to that life. That you have released to us through Christ. Who is that. Life giving spirit. Hallelujah. Let that light be conceived on us, within us right now. And spring forth the evidence, the fruit, and much fruit that will be evidence to the life in us. For you said you shall know them by their fruit. We pray that anything that we have given entertained giving room to in our life that is encumbering that life hindering short circuiting restricting that life from coming its fruition in our lives will be eradicated stamped out of our life put to death by your word which is the sword of the spirit Put to death everything in us that is not of you. 
and let Christ be magnified. Be magnified, O oh God. We don't want to remain the same. We don't want to keep trying and trying to maintain some outward look of self-righteousness or to know the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus to be commit hallelujah the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus I release grace right now to the hearers and as they hear your word today they will not be forgetful neglectful or turn away from your word but that they will embrace this word and it will conceive in their spirit and birth forth that life that you declare is ours <laughs> sorry in Jesus name come on lift that hand now and praise him that life is flowing right now that life is transforming right now word of God says Mary received the word of God and the Holy Spirit came upon her and she conceived as the word is in your spirit I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon you now and you will conceive the life the life the life of God in Christ eternal life for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life Jesus Christ our Lord I pray that that life will be unveiled in you and that you will never 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 be the same again hallelujah and all demonic foes and attachment that have clinged on to your earthly suit and your earthly life will be broken right now Hallelujah. irreparably damaged and destroyed by fire reduced to dust under your feet and that the grace of God will lift you higher higher and higher and higher thank you Lord that you have given us this life in Christ Jesus and it's in him we move and we breathe and we have our being have your own way now as we heal it all into your hands in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Thank you, Jesus. He deserves it. From the rising of the sun till it's going down. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now those who need healing, just lay hands on your body. Right where you are right now. I pray for the activation of that life. The life of God is a healing life. Restoring life, delivering life. Life giving life. Hallelujah. Creative life. Hallelujah. Miraculous, supernatural life. I pray that it be activated in you now to flush out every sickness and disease out of your body. Because that body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It belongs to the Lord. Devil, you have no authority over that body. That body belongs to Jesus. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we plead the blood of Jesus against every sickness and disease to melt out of that body, to be flushed out, to be, to be banished from that body right now. Never to return. 
to take out a restraining order against any further interference and, and my God and obstruction in the health of this body. We pray that it will go from health to health, from strength to strength, from grace to grace. The anointing of Christ will revive. Hallelujah. And renew and restore right now in the name of Jesus. Now Satan, drop your weapons and flee. Hallelujah. Let the angels of God now be dispatched, Lord, with flaming sword to perform surgery on everybody that has been affected, infected by Satan and his evil host. Let healing now manifest because you said healing is the children's bread. And we lay claim to it now and declare no evil shall come nigh our dwelling. In long life you will satisfy us and show us your salvation. Thank you, Lord, that we shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. We thank you that you have healed all our diseases and all our sickness. You fill our mouth with good things that our youth is renewed like the eagle. You save our soul from destruction and our lives from the pit. Thank you for all these benefits. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Praise God, praise God, praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise God. He deserves the worship. Praise God. Now move that body and check that body. And see how it's doing. You need to, hallelujah, check that back, that lower back, check that arm, rub that head, shake that head, shake that eye. Hallelujah. Check that swelling. Praise God. Healing is manifesting right now. The power of God to heal is coming into your body. Springing through your body right now. Word is connecting with word. Spirit with spirit. Anointing with anointing. Faith with faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it will yield fruitful. Fruitful. Fruitful results. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Now somebody give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good to see the work of the Lord in your life. And to hear of what the Lord is doing. He wanted to connect more with us. This is Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International. We are here at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan, declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. He wanted to always continue in the word of faith and of power. Declared through our Lord Jesus Christ, we are declaring him to you. Hallelujah. We don't declare ourselves, we declare him to you and ourselves who is called as joint ears, as bond servants to the Hallelujah. And as we declare him to you, we wanted to grow in the faith and see the power of God manifest in your life. Praise God. So we encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You want to know more about the ministry, check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. Hallelujah. You can write your praise report there for all this ministry and blessing you. I can write your prayer request. We can connect our faith with yours for greater results. We believe together we will accomplish more. One shall chase a thousand and two will put ten thousand to flight. There is power in agreement. And as we walk by faith, hallelujah, we will see mighty signs and wonders and have great report in the Lord. Praise God. Also, we also invite you to look at our, our, our streams on Facebook. Hallelujah. And on YouTube, you can find the recordings. Look for the name Richard Fagan on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. And also on Facebook, you can send a friend's request. And we plug you into the recording to see further teachings that we declare on Christ and on the power of his kingdom operating 
in your life. Praise God. He wants you to walk by faith and walk in the truth that you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And that's our intention. That's our aim and our goal. We know as you walk with us, you will go from strength to strength, from faith to faith, and from glory to glory. And that's what God wants to do in our lives. Together we can. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you have any further questions, or you want to feel led by the Holy Spirit to sow to this ministry, you can sow through our website, Increasing faith intl.org any other questions or queries you have pertaining to faith or the call or the ministry you can call me richard fagan at 876-839-9390 or 876-557-2427 all the information is on the stream god bless you until next time be strong in the lord and in the power of his might lift those hands to the lord praise god Oh, you want to pray for your gifts and your seeds. Praise God. We pray for those who also are sowing online. Praise God. Let's lift your hands and believe for a miracle in your finances. Hallelujah. We believe that though things look dry out there and damp out there, God's hand is not short and is able to do exceedingly abundantly. And above all, you can ever think, hope, or imagine. Come on, somebody. Lift those hands to the Lord right where you are now as an act of faith. Uh, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I believe for uh, your anointing to come upon these people who have connected with us through faith and believe that the anointing destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. Let provision come to them now in the name of Jesus. Bind the, the oppressor and bind every work of darkness that is hindering the flow of their finances. Break up every ambush and blockage of the enemy. Let your angels run ahead of them. Cut and clear the way and disappoint the enemy's plan. Cause them to receive witty ideas and visions and, and, and hallelujah and partnerships. Uh, hallelujah and favor with men, oh God, that will bring them in positions of influence and power that will cause increase and promotion and, and benefits to come to them as they look to you and they walk by faith and listen to your voice speaking in their spirit and directing and ordering their steps. They will read more hallelujah that they have ever sown in the name of Jesus and they will know this is, it is you that give them the power to gain wealth. And you said when they give it shall be given unto them. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men pour into their bosom. And we pray that it is so and declare it so now in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, bless God. We'll, we, that's all for today, but we'll meet you again. Praise God in our next broadcast. Look out for us. And we're coming to you live on Facebook. Praise God. We'll subscribe to Richard Fagan and connect with the broadcast and watch what God is doing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you real good. Until next time, stay sweet in the Lord. Bless you all.